Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and renew us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, Therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. How long wilt thou forgive me, O Lord? How long wilt thou hide thy face from me? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all them that put their trust in thee, Mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good things without thee, grant us the help of thy grace, that in keeping thy commandments we may please thee, both in will and deed. Through thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The epistle lesson for this first Sunday after Trinity is from 1 John chapter 4. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. 
For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Here is the reading. Let us pray together Psalm 33, verses 12 through 22, and we'll read it responsibly. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven. And beholds all the people in the world. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze. On all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them. And understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance. For all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him. On those who wait upon his love. To pluck their lives from death. And to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him. For in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us. As we have put our trust in you. Let us stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off, and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. <laughs> Last week on the Feast of the Holy Trinity, I spoke about the common image in which all of humanity was created. Humanity was made in a reflected image of the Godhead, a diverse unity. As the Father is distinct from the Son, who is distinct from the Holy Spirit, regarding their person. It's not going to be a, another Trinitarian lecture this morning. 
They are nevertheless bound in unity by a mutual love one towards the other. Remember last week I, I quoted Jesus' uh, foundation for his high priestly prayer. I am in the Father and the Father in me. There Jesus prays for us all to be one. May they all be one. May we all be one. A prayer that we too ought to be praying in these days. Praying that the image in which humanity was created would become the image in which humanity today would live. But does not. Indeed, it does regrettably does not. As if we needed further evidence of that, as if we needed further proof of that reality, today we're confronted by two men, both of whom are made in the image of God. Both whom we affirm are God's good creation. And yet, nevertheless, who after their death are eternally separated from one another by two vastly different experiences of God's just judgment. Lazarus enters and rests in the comfort of the saints of God. The rich man enters the torment and torture of hell. Lazarus receives God's justice as justification, as salvation. The rich man receives God's justice as judge and executioner. How can this be? If both are made in God's image, if they are both made in the divine image, should they not both be reconciled to that image from whence they came? Should they not both have been saved? Shouldn't they have been throughout their days on earth perfect, good, little drones of the Maker? No. The earliest fathers of the church, who were closer and better readers of the Bible than most are today, even better than myself, they saw the answer posed by this question in that verse of Genesis, that first chapter of Genesis, which I began this morning's sermon with, between image and likeness. Image, the fathers argue, are those faculties that God gives to man at the very beginning that are akin to God's. That is, the image of man is his soul, his spirit, and his body. The tools given to each person that reflects the Creator's own mind and spirit. God has given to humanity the faculties to know him. Likeness, on the other hand, is the potentiality of man to become like unto God. Not in the terms of power, we're all going to be gods or something like this, or in being, but rather in character and in nature. And who, what is the nature of God we heard from 1 John today? Love. Image, the fathers argue, denotes man's potentiality for the life in God. Likeness denotes his realization of that potentiality. Here we see that distinction played out in Jesus' own parable set before you and I today, both the rich man and Lazarus are made in the image of God, yet only one bears his likeness. Both men have received from God at their own moment of creation the gifts and faculties to receive God's salvation, yet only one does. And with this in mind, it becomes absolutely clear here that the rich man is not condemned in his wealth, even though it does him no favor. And poor Lazarus is not saved in his poverty or by being poor. Rather, Lazarus is saved and delivered into the bosom of Abraham because of his likeness to God. That is, his likeness to Christ. The rich man is condemned and tormented because he spent his days rejecting the likeness of God in favor 
of his own reflection. I'm going to feast every day, party every day at my house, and look at me, got the finest clothes on that you ever did see. Wow, I just wrote a song. That's amazing. I'm not, I'm not a lyricist nor a poet, but apparently I just did on the cuff there. That's amazing. Isaiah 53. The great suffering servant song of Isaiah, prophesying, prophesying of our Lord Jesus Christ, says this. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hid their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. We know this of Christ. But on further glance, on second glance, glance, it sounds an awful lot like Lazarus, a man despised and rejected by the rich man, inflicted with the sorrows of life, abandoned by his neighbors, by those of his own fellow kindred who are made in the image of God, one to whom only the dogs would attend and minister to and show any type of kindness. The author of Hebrews writes this, For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought out into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Here, the author of Hebrews writes of our salvation in Christ, who suffered outside the gate on the hill of Golgotha, at the hands of those secure inside the gate. <clears throat> Jesus is the one who suffers outside the gate. And yet he describes poor Lazarus at that same place, outside the gate of the rich man suffering and languishing away at the hands of the one inside the gate. This is from Luke. On the first day of the week at early dawn, behold, two men stood by, the women, in dazzling apparel. At Christ's death, two angels appear and accompany Christ's resurrection. And how does Jesus describe Lazarus' death? The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. It seems, beloved, that Christ is acknowledging that very own likeness to himself in Lazarus. He sees it and lays it before us so that we might see in him the image and likeness of Christ. But there is one more likeness to Jesus found in Lazarus, that chief likeness. That saving likeness. Faith. Absolute, utter, dependent faith in God for all mercy, for all consolation, for all help. For Lazarus, like our Lord, has had all his kindred abandoned him. Surely they both suffered and despaired at times as Jesus himself utters from the cross, Why hast thou forsaken me? Yet Christ did not lose heart. He does not give up his faith, but rather with his dying breath said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And it was only into that same Father's hand that Lazarus himself could commit his spirit. He could only commit his care, his hope in the Father's hand and of his divine love and goodness. It is only into God's mercy that he could ever hope. For as he lay dying at the rich man's gate, he was utterly rejected, despised, and abandoned by those of his kindred. Lazarus, Lazarus has nothing of himself, nothing to buy nor to give of his own accord, simply a beggar for the mercy of God. 
who like unto Christ trusted in God with all that he could muster, even to his dying breath. Lazarus heeds the words of the psalmist. Put not your trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth. Lazarus trusts not in emperor nor governor. He does not trust in the people's front of Judea or the Judean people's front. Monty Python reference for some of you. But he trusts in God alone. The faith of Lazarus he is both the image and likeness of Christ's own faith. This the rich man himself could have possessed as well. It, it was for him as well. Had he heeded the words of Moses and the prophets, he could have trusted in God for all of his care and needs. And when seeing a beggar at his door pleading for mercy, he could have acted in the likeness of God. Both men, made in the image of God, but only one, only Lazarus, looks like him. This morning's gospel serves as law in gospel, in the Lutheran sense of the words. It acts as law by showing us the reality of our sins and the wages that it brings. It shows us that our own image and likeness of God has been marred by sins, both original and actual. It speaks God's words of judgment by showing us the sad fate of the rich man in order to drive us to Christ, to drive us to repentance so that his fate might not become our own. And thus it shows us the gospel through the likeness of Christ found in Lazarus. That is salvation by faith alone. Faith saves. Faith clings to God. Faith claims and unites us to Christ so intimately that he is ours and we are his. That his likeness becomes our likeness. He gives us the gift of faith itself. Faith to believe and to trust in only God. To get us through the challenges, the difficulties the anguish and pain that we face in life. He gives us Christ as the image of our salvation, of our faith to trust in Him when the world is going mad around us. In this we trust. That is, that if as Lazarus we do not experience in this world or at this time um, mercy in love, we will receive it in full in the life to come. That is our Christian faith. Faith in Christ and in the mercy of God who will mete out his divine justice in love. We're not going to experience it fully right now. But we will then. We will then. This faith. May we find ourselves in the likeness of Christ's own faith. In his likeness received through the word and the holy sacraments. May we, each of us, grow every day into the likeness of Christ. So that at our own last, the ministering angels may carry us to the bosom of our father Abraham. To the bosom of God, Father Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose image we were made and in whose likeness we are being made. To him be all glory and honor and praise, both now and ever and unto ages of ages.
together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. The responses for today's prayers will be, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father in heaven, Look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace, that your holy name would be hallowed by us, and all the world, through the pure and true teaching of your word, and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, for by your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your Son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Spirit according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrificed to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend all who are in need. Especially Kathy, Cheryl, Brandy, Barbara, Virginia, Mary, Stephen, George and May, Marlene, Ben, Adrian, Carol, Sharon, Max, Beth, Sharon, Martha, Lee, Don and Eileen, Crystal, Sharon, Mary, Paul, Darcy, Mary, Pearl, family of Charlie Chin and Jennifer, and others whom we name in the silence of our hearts. Praying for them at all times, thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us our daily bread, preserve us from greed and selfish cares, and help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy, 
Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is very meet, right, and our bounded duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, who with thine only begotten Son and the Holy Ghost art one God, one Lord in trinity of persons, and in unity of substance. For that which we believe of thy glory, O Father, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, without any difference of any quality. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O God, to the fountain of all holiness. You bring light from darkness, light from death, speech from silence. We worship you for our lives and for the world you give us. We thank you for the new world to come and for the love that will rule all in all. We praise you for the grace shown to Israel, your chosen, the people of your promise, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the memory of the fathers, the homecoming from exile, and the prophet's words that will not be in vain. In all this, we bless you for your only begotten Son, who fulfilled and will fulfill all your promises. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the incarnation of your Son, his human birth, and the covenant he made with us. We remember the sacrifice of his life, his eating with outcasts and sinners, and his acceptance of death. But chiefly on this day, we remember his rising from the tomb, his ascension to the seat of power, and his sending of the holy and life-giving spirit. We cry out for the resurrection of our lives, when Christ will come again in beauty and power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we and all who share in this bread and cup may be united in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may enter the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, and may receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest, until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and power is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. You may be seated. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in firm of love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.